You mentioned the pair of All-Americans, Sabrina Ionescu, a triple-double machine. She is tied for the NCAA record, both men and women. And on the other side, Tierra McCowan had a career night for State when they beat Oregon down in Starkville last year, dropped 35 on the Doug, uh, Ducks with 19 boards and five blocks. And the Road Reds will win the opening tip. For the Bulldogs, four new starters from their team that reached the championship game a year ago. McCowan being the lone returnee, and here she is with a touch and a lot of attention around her. Both teams will play man-to-man -man defense. We won't see any zone at all out of Mississippi State. We might see multiple looks from Oregon. Yudescu, number 20 in white, led the league last year in not only scoring but assists as well as Monte Cazorla finds the lane to drive. She does a really nice job of turning the corner and going right at the shot blocker, McCowan. Tierra McCowan, 6'7", number 15 in maroon, is the target to keep an eye on for Mississippi State. Three-pointer is no good from Chloe Bibby. This might be the stat of the night, Debbie. The offensive boards for Mississippi State, they dominate on the glass. They'll get a second chance here. And Rio Howard, the grad transfer from Texas A&M, and a rebound for UNESCO. And she'll pull up from 16. Kept alive by Aaron Boley, and a whistle and a foul will go against the Ducks. You heard Holly talk about the physicality of Mississippi State. They're an up the line overplaying. They've got more depth. They can get aggressive with their defense for head coach Vic Schaefer. Oregon's the other way, Beth. They've got to play more of that finesse game. Soft on their defensive effort, and they cannot get in foul trouble. This is why there's such a huge crowd here tonight. This is the biggest game based on the rankings of the two teams in the history of the women's program here. And it matches that of that UCLA visit here for the men back in 1975. So a big deal in the Pacific Northwest. Jordan Danbury, number 24 in Maroon. She's got the assignment on Sabrina Unescu. They love to shoot the three, do the Ducks. Short on that shot by Cazorla. And here's Howard with the pull up. The senior out of Atlanta, 1,000 points score, 1,000 rebounds as well. Transfer graduate student from Texas A&M, and she has the ability to get it off the glass and fill the middle of the floor and get them in their transition game. And she's a tremendous offensive rebounder. Satu Sabali, last year's Pac-12 Freshman of the Year with the kick out and the step back for Aaron Boley, a former high school national player of the year out of Kentucky. She's also a transfer from Notre Dame, playing in her first year of eligibility for Oregon. She is a tremendous offensive stretcher, meaning she can score two and three feet outside the three-point line to open things up for Ruthie Hebert on the inside. The other four, really, Debbie, right? They can all shoot it to try and stretch that floor, and there is a second chance point. They'll get close to 20 of them a game. You know, Beth, there's a chance that this could be the threes of Oregon versus the twos of Mississippi State. A lot of ball screen action for the Ducks. Really good do. Bowley off the bounce, and she's hit a couple early. That's one thing Mississippi State will try to do, is they've got to run Oregon off the three-point line, force them to make a play with their feet off the bounce. Jasmine Holmes. And Danbury off the dribble. Yeah, I don't think there's any perimeter matchup that Oregon can keep in front of yeah. them. They're, Mississippi State is so good off the bounce and turning the corner in their offense, especially out of that dribble drive action. The defense has been an issue for Oregon, and they have the ability to simply outscore opponents. The pick and the roll right there for Ruthie Hebert. 
They've run three pick and rolls with Mar 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 Marte Col Corzola with the ball, but the first time they ran it on the right side of the floor. Let's see if they go right back to that. The quick response from Mississippi State for the one-point lead. And why that play works, Beth, is because you've got shooters in the corner, so you cannot help them. Two teams met, both Hebert and McCowan had monster games. In fact, Ruthie only missed one of the 12 shots she attempted as Savali gets two to grab the lead again. You know what, I'm perfectly fine if this is up and down like this all game. I have absolutely no issue with this. Mississippi State five of eight, Oregon five for their first seven. Zone for Oregon. Howard. Using that body to create some space. And here comes UNESCO. She'll pull up in traffic, in and out. She's had two pretty good looks in transition from 15. Holmes, no good, but right there, weak side is McCowan. Yeah, there's no reason why Mississippi State should ever turn the ball over. That's a great drive. Just throw it up on the glass and let 6-7 rebound it on the weak side. Cazorla, they did a good job of getting McCowan out of the paint. Maite, the senior from Spain, she's number two all-time in assists, but she's gotten better each of her four years becoming a scorer. Look, the jacket is off. Vic Schaefer is <laughs> not happy with his team's defensive effort. I don't think he's happy with their shot selection either. Six minutes gone, and a good start for both sides on the offensive end. There's Hebert with the rebound, and there's the jacketless Vic Schaefer. They've got two and three white jerseys around Tierra McCowan. What a job that Schaefer has done at Mississippi State now in his seventh year. He was the coach of the year last season on a 37-2 record. It ended in the national championship game and that heartbreaking loss to the Fighting Irish. Bibby got the range. The Aussie drills the three. Bibby with a bucket now. And this kid right here, 51% outside the three point line. She doesn't need much space or separation to get her shot off either. This is what Mississippi State likes to do off the make, try and turn the heat up for 94 feet. But Cazorla's a terrific ball handler. Yeah, and keep in mind, there's a wear down effect over four quarters. It's not just what happens now, it's what happens in the fourth. And a blocking foul called on the drive. That'll go against Danbury. Morgan early on. And the best free throw shooting team in the country gets a couple there. We are even at 15. Mississippi State undefeated with a couple of ranked wins. Oregon, their lone loss on the road against Michigan State. Now this is the last big non-conference matchup for these two. So Anriel Howard to the free throw line, 65% on the season. Well, Thursday, we've got uh, college basketball on the men's side for you, ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. And a top 10 showdown there as well. Texas Tech off to a phenomenal start. And, of course, you got to check out Duke and Zion Williamson. That'll be at Madison Square Garden. Holly Rowe will be courtside for that one. And you can always watch on the ESPN app from anywhere you happen to be. Zion Williamson, oh, you set your time by it. You decide when you eat your meals by it. You just <laughs> keep your eye on Zion Williamson for Duke. Eye on Zion, Holly. I will say from the Big 12 perspective, though, that Texas Tech is one of the leaders in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Well, so look out. They're going to make things hard for Duke yeah, at the Garden. Undefeated, or Holly. Should yeah. be fun. Here's a look at Kelly Graves now in his fifth season. Back-to-back -back trips to the Elite Eight. And they won both the regular season and the tournament championships last year in the Pac-12. They are the preseason favorites again this year. 
Although, Debbie Antonelli, you think Stanford might be able to grab I, the top spot. I do. I, I, there's a reason why. Part of it is because it's hard to pick against Tara, right? Yeah. I mean, she's terrific. Um, the other thing is the way the Pac-12 schedule lays out, Oregon and Oregon State have to play each other twice, mm -hmm. where Stanford only plays them each once, and they play them at home. So Oregon and Oregon State are going to have to go into Maples and win those games, and that is not easy. The league will probably be decided when those three and the Cal Bears all play each other in about a 10-day stretch. And a terrific assist, Yanescu to Hebert with the finish. The shoot is the middle of the floor. The free throw lane extended, and that's where Oregon is running all their offense. Shooters in the corner, stretching the floor, and getting a, a isolation on the inside. And that's going to be an offensive foul called on uh, Mississippi State. Hey, watch, there's a screen right on the elbow in the pinch, and they're just playing in the shoot. Shooters in the corner, very well designed, terrific execution, great time off the timeout to run it. And that is the second foul on starting guard Jordan Danbury, number 24 in the maroon. And she is going to check out right now. Not the old butt play right here. Mm. Mississippi State applying the full court pressure whenever they can. There, there's not a lot of depth on this Oregon team. In fact, only nine players available. And there's still a back injury that is uh, keeping Morgan Yeager on the side. I think point three always has to come off the clock on that play. So that's why there's one second take, taken off the shot clock. I don't know if there is an established off the butt inbounds pass so for how much time comes off the clock. But we thought that it would be an issue for the Ducks off the bounce, but not so far for Cazorla. It's not a problem for them to score, no. And so because they score, they're able to get back and look at where their defense is inside the arc. Right now they're playing a little bit, looks like a box and one on Bibby. Howard lost her footing and is called for the walk. And she may have hurt her ankle. So a starter in foul trouble and now possibly another one with an injury issue for Howard. Yeah, you see, that's it's on that left ankle. Yep. So what do you do when you're a veteran player and you want to play in a big game? You just lace them up a little tighter. Mm -hmm. This is a team that is second in the country in scoring, fourth in the country in scoring defense. They're used to wiping people out. So a good challenge, a good test for this Bulldog team tonight. And the swat by McCowan. They are the best shot blocking team in the country as well. I love the stuff they're running off the pinch, the screen on the ball. Mississippi State looks very stagnant on offense. They need to move the ball. There's their dribble drive action. This usually gets them going. And an offensive foul called off the ball on Tierra McCowan. She hasn't had an easy quality touch. Watch McCowan, number 15, underneath the basket, being guarded by Hebert. Oh, well, boy. I don't know about no. that. There's a couple All American candidates matching up there. Did we agree? We did agree on that one. <laughs> Ionescu stepped out of bounds. So Sabrina so far scoreless. She's got three rebounds and a couple of assists. Last year set the Pac-12 assist record as the final seconds tick away in the first quarter. And Holmes off the mark. One is thus far. 
They've only allowed McCowan and Enriel Howard one offensive rebound and only four second chance points. They'll take that. Well, I think part of the reason why Mississippi State cannot get to the offensive glass is because I don't think their shot selection has been very good in the first half. So if you're not taking shots in the rhythm of your offense, it's very difficult to get to the boards. And plus, Howard's taking two threes. That takes her away from offensive rebound. There's a turnover for Oregon. Lydia Giomi, the 6'6 sophomore, coming on. They're gonna, they've been going to their bench a little bit here tonight. And the, the foul trouble for Mississippi State, starting guard Jordan Danbury is out with two right now. McCowan with a paint touch, immediately double teamed and her kick out with three ball, no good. Good hustle by Bibby to keep that alive. to the man defensively for the Ducks. Off the bounce. And it's Adi Gilden, the senior from Spokane with the rebound. Through to their horn series. They're playing off the elbows. Bowley for three, she's got it. And they are such a great offensive rhythmic team. What a terrific left-handed pass by Yonescu, right to the shooting pocket, and Bowley gets her feet under her shoulders. Bowley and Kazorla with eight each. It's an offense with all five starters, average in double digits. McCowan, the put back and one. And she hit the deck hard. <laughs> Enriel Howard kept that ball alive on the offensive glass. There she is with a tip, and then McCowan with that long reach. See, those are the plays that she's got to stay on her feet for. I'll tell you what, she is quite the athlete. I don't think she gets enough credit for how athletic, and we know she's long, and we know she's tall, but she moves so well around the rim block to block. 6'7", senior out of Brown, Texas. The preseason player of the year in the SEC coming off an All-American season where she was also honored as the defensive player of the year nationally. Ionescu. Still searching for her first bucket. Hebert and the second block. And a quick outlet from Tierra. Holmes switches to the left side, missed the layup. And you gotta make that play. Yonescu, nice hesitation on the left side and then uses the window. Beth, that's a four point play because McCowan blocks it into their transition game and Holmes misses a layup. Yonescu quickly the other end. Just switch that dribble weave action at the top of the floor. Howard with the step through. See, you run the dribble drive, you get that matchup that you want because Oregon is switching that defensively. Off the takeaway and quickly to Bibby for two. As Danbury is back out there. Allied around the spirit of women's basketball, and it's been great to see. Okay, this is no offense to the men, but I'm just secretly <laughs> super proud. I think we have more women or more fans here tonight for the women's game. Do you think that's right? I think you're accurate, Holly. And, uh, you know, this is a great game with two great teams. And uh, this place is going to make a difference. All right. All right. I just had to shout out to the women. They've done a great job. Thank you. And can we just quickly show Rob's shoes? I just want you to see the AD shoes. Oh, nice. I mean, this is a stylish AD here. I, I'm, I'm just very proud of him. You're looking good, too, Holly. Congratulations on a great environment for women's basketball. We're so excited to be here. Great. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. All right. See you down the road at college football. All righty. Holly's absolutely right. I was here for the men's game. There's more people in here, mm -hmm. and it's very active and lively. Uh, your picks, by the way, Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama, yeah, and uh, Oklahoma. You know I got Clemson. Full transparency, I'm paying tuition. There, there. you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> A two-point lead here for Oregon. Trying to hand Mississippi State its first loss of the season. 
State already with wins over Texas and Marquette. And the three ball is good from Chloe Bibby. That's a great execution. That is too easy. I think we finally saw a little crack of a smile from Vic Schaefer on that out-of-bounds play. <laughs> now he knew it was going to be a, a struggle coming in here on the road, hostile environment. Of course, they've played in front of some big crowds the last few years, including all those great crowds at the Final Fours the last two seasons. And Sabali misses in the lane, rebound McCown. Beth, we're talking about this crowd. I mean, Mississippi State and the SEC traditionally has great women's oh, basketball yeah. crowds. South Carolina's led the country the last four years in attendance. And every year, Mississippi State has won more games in the year before, and their crowd continues. He was talking about what you were talking about. The defender is getting up underneath and into her and taking away her space to turn. The argument that Vic was trying to make. Still a one-point game, 5.35 to go here in the first half. The top two scoring teams in the country, both over 90 points per game. And Kazora, I think all five of her buckets have been driven yes. drive. She's got 10 here in the first half. I mean, she is just taking Jasmine Holmes off the bounce. Holmes has got to do a much better job of keeping Kazola in front of her. Danbury mid-range is good. Looked like they changed up the defense again there, Debbie, and they had uh, they had a chaser on the three-point shooter, Bibby. We'll see if they stick with him. They were toying around with a little triangle and two. Now we saw a little look what, like a box and one earlier. Baseline drive and the pull up. Yonescu now with six points, three rebounds, and three assists. What a beautiful jump shot. She rejects the screen. Two dribble pull up into a beautiful looking jump shot. She's been taking more shots the last couple of games and scoring, averaging 28 points over the last two contests. And she takes 14 field goals a game. That's the most on the team. Another mid range from Enril Howard as uh, Mississippi State bumps its shooting percentage back over 50. This is a great time to look for a backdoor play just because Mississippi State is really amping up their pressure. Sadly on the drive and walked and give credit to McCowan there. She heard footsteps as Tierra was coming over to help. Nice mid-range jumper. And then watch, here comes the screen. Reject the screen, drive, pull up. Under four to go in the first half. Both Danbury and McCowan playing with the two fouls. Bibby's three is off the mark. And Jordan keeps it alive. Long threes, long rebounds. Howard walked. That was really good defense. And Asabali is going to check out right now, replaced by Taylor Chavez, the freshman from Surprise, Arizona. She and her sister, who's out right now with a knee injury, coming over from Germany. Kozorvas did a terrific job handling the ball up front. Unescu for three, got it. I mean, slice and dice. Offense looks pretty good. The versatility too, Debbie, of the guards. They can score when they have to. They are both good distributors of the basketball. They don't make many mistakes. Yep. They don't turn it over. Danbury on the drive. And she is stood up and fouled by Bowley. See, Danbury was on the same angle to the bucket that we are, and there was no space or gap there, and her quicks allowed her to draw that foul. Look for the lob play. Bibby got caught up in the air, was able to get a bounce down. Danbury will pull up short. 
Howard, offensive rebound, finds McCowan, and they'll get another opportunity. And that one goes in and out. McCowan's got to be careful. Numbers for the Ducks. Ionescu looking for the assist, and she gets it. Well, coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, a big win for the Stanford Cardinal against Tennessee, and also the release today of the WNBA schedule for next summer. It's a good one. It'll get underway with Phoenix and Seattle next May 25th. That'll be Kevin Connors and Rebecca Lobo coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report. How about Stanford back-to-back -to -back top 10 wins? Yeah. Baylor at home and then on the road at Tennessee. Ducks are on an 11-4 run right now. And Howard will stop that. Good interior passing. There's no screening going on here. Do you notice that? Yeah. They're just trying to get open. Cazorla with 12, Ionescu with 9. In fact, all of Sabrina's scoring coming in this second quarter as the guards have been getting the work done. Holly? Well, I listened in to Vic Schaefer's last huddle after he had called timeout, and he's frustrated with his big, Tierra McCown, that she's not posting up hard enough. He said, you're not posting up, you're just standing there. So coming out of the timeout, she was a little frustrated. You could see it on her face, but she went right out, posted up hard, and then dumped it down to an open Howard. She responded to what he challenged her in the huddle. Yonescu fouled on the shot. You know, when you talk to Vic Schaefer, as we did today at practice, they're, they're so proud of, okay, we're going to recruit the kind of student athletes we want to coach. We're going to retain the players and have them grow and develop over the course of their four years. And, and what a run it's been for this Mississippi State team, including those back-to-back -back trips to the championship game. That wasn't an easy place to win not so long no, ago. I mean... This is his seventh year. His first year, they won 13 games. To think about what he was able to do in years five and six. And every year, they get a little bit better. And the last year, they lost four starters. A year before, they lost four starters. I think you'd say Vic yeah. Schaefer knows how to develop players. Lost four starters and lost four starters. And there's a foul on McCowan. By the way, you may have recognized a familiar face behind Coach Schaefer over there on that bench. For you fans of entertainment tonight and a former colleague of ours on the sports side, Kevin Frazier is a family friend of the Schaefer's. He's an assistant coach today. He's got the colors on and everything. We told him not to get in any trouble over there. Don't try to call timeout, Kevin. <laughs> Blair Schaefer, uh, the coach's daughter, uh, who was a star on their last couple of teams and is now uh, entering our industry, the sportscasting biz. She actually was an intern for Kevin Frazier on entertainment tonight. And now she's doing it all. This is how you start out in this business, That's folks. That's right. She's doing a great job. She's working with uh, the CBS affiliate right back in Columbus, yep. Mississippi. And Kevin's been a good mentor and a role model for her. He looks a little nervous over there. He's working that gum on the side. <laughs> Free throws cut it to a four-point game steal. and then the takeaway. Second time they've been able to turn him over in this situation in the full court. Now you got a chance for two for one, but you have to practice this if you're going to be able to do it. Two for one with the shot clock and the game clock to end the half. Howard, the pull-up. Okay, there's the one. Now Oregon's going to have to take a shot. See, that's the second time that... Unreal Howard has recognized Ta Taylor Chavez has switched off on her at the top of the floor, and she scored both times in that matchup. Difference is about eight seconds. Shot and game clock. This is who you want to have the ball under 10. She's going to have to jack. 
and does. So an opportunity here for the two for one for Mississippi State to tie it or grab the lead. Danbury fouled on the drive. Terrific clock and game management here and good decisions by the Bulldogs. Really good, understanding the time is running down. Now, I don't know where the foul is there no. from that angle. Kelly Graves obviously is his chance to, to get upset. Oh, and that's the second on Kazorla. And Graves does not think she got her money's worth on that one. And did he just get teed up? He, Michael Price just teed him up with .8 on the clock at the end of the half. in his mouth and that yep. was enough for the official what a swing this could be in Mississippi State's favor Holmes hits the first remember they just made the two-pointer at about the 42nd mark so four unanswered and Holmes let's see with eight tenths here on the clock six in a row for state you have time for a catch and oh you got to shoot the free throw so you go back to the point of interruption this could be a, you're right beth big swing here danbury was the player that was fouled on the drive with point eight on the clock there's time for a catch and shoot for oregon let's see what play they run you want to try to throw the basketball if you can to about mid-court you got time for one quick dribble for the lead for Mississippi State. It's gonna be Adi Gilden who will inbound. And they'll just take it into the locker room. Good finish for the... Well, Coach, in nearly two decades covering sports, I believe this is my first fish hook question. Ah, what was the significance? Uh, that was a bad move. I got to know who's who's calling the game. But, you know, sometimes when they fall for something, it's like, uh, you know, you hooked that fish and they fell for it. So that was a bad move. So how does your team regroup? You know, they had a lead, didn't yeah. finish the end, uh, the end of the half like you wanted. Oh, I think we're okay. I mean, I thought we really battled. That's a heck of a first half by both teams. And, and we battled, um, you know, two good offensive teams. You know, the I irony is it's going to be one at the defensive end is this half. But, uh, yeah, we just got to eliminate some of the kind of mental errors, the inbounds passes. And, you know, that's what they do. Boy, they, they don't let you rest at all. And uh, and if you are casual for one moment, they, they take advantage of it. I hear you. All right. Don't fall for anything, Coach. Are you a fisherman? I am now. Okay. It's kind of fun. Just remember, don't do it when you're in a game like this, okay? Got it. Copy. Uh, Fish stories and pickup lines. <laughs> 42 to 39, State with the lead. I'll tell you who is a fisherman is Vic Schaefer, and he's also a hunter. I always said I want to watch some film in a deer stand with Vic <laughs> Schaefer one day. <laughs> Reality TV. These are two well-coached teams, and I, I think what makes both of their stories so special is, you know what, five, six years ago, if you would have told anybody that they were going to be the SEC and the Pac-12 champs, you would have thought somebody was crazy. And they have done incredible jobs at places where winning has not come easy over the years. In fact, last year's SEC championship was the first ever for any women's team at Mississippi State. These two guys have done remarkable jobs getting their teams not only prepared to play, but now in contention for national championships. So one of the things when Mississippi State comes back out to play in the second half that I always check on the stat sheet is how many fouls do their interior players have. Henriel Howard only has one. Watch for her to become more aggressive here in the second half as she does there pick up go. her second foul. Biggest lead right now of the night for Mississippi State. It has been a while since the Bulldogs uh, have bitten the dust against a non-conference foe. In fact, 46 consecutive non-conference wins. You've got to go back to a road trip to Austin, Texas in 2015, the last time they lost to somebody outside the SEC in the regular season. 
Well, when you go back to back to the national championship game and you win 37 and 34 the year before, it's a lot of winning for Vic Schaefer. And as you addressed, they've done it with different teams in each of the last two years, had, had to replace four starters both times. Bibby's miss rebounded by Shabali. And saw two. Can she go coast to coast? No, she'll drop it off to Ruthie Heber. That's the way the ball screen defense is, is they poke that hedge, and UNESCO just misses an easy one. Had McCowan in the neighborhood defensively that time, and on the drive, Sabali whistled for the foul. We spoke to Sabrina Ionescu today at Shoot Around, and one of the things we talked about was this play right here. Okay. McCowan is going to poke that head. She said, I'm going to hesitate just a second, and then I'm going to go really hard and turn the corner. That's what she did right there. She just missed the shot. When we talked about Oregon's lack of depth, it will be tested right here. Sabali will sit with her third foul, replaced by the freshman, Taylor Chavez. Dan Barry knocks down the second free throw, and they will slap on the pressure right away. And you know what, Beth? Aaron Bowling was effective early. And they'll force another turnover, but then give it right back. Bowling had eight points. She had a couple of triples, but that was early in the first quarter. I'm not sure she scored in the second. Called on Jasmine Holmes, the senior out of Gulfport, Mississippi. She'll knock it loose from behind. Good poke by Holmes from behind. Get that deflection. Now you can set your defense. Look for Carzola to get it right back. Hebert offensive rebound. The kick out for three, Chavez. That's her seventh triple of the season. They knocked down about 11 per game. They've got four so far, and the response from Howard for two. She's got a great motor, is Andrea Howard. On the glass, on the defensive end, brings energy every day. Vic Schaefer says every day she shows up with a smile. and a terrific addition to this Mississippi State lineup. Hebert, well, she had one of the best games of her career last year against Mississippi State, but quiet so far tonight. You put Bibby on the same side of the floor as McCowan, you gotta come with a long closeout. You can create some space. Bibby is their best three-point shooter. There she is. They closed out on her, forced her to give it up. And as a result, they're going to get it. No damage done. Well, Thursday, how about Zion Williamson and the Duke Blue Devils? We heard Kevin and Rebecca talking about him at halftime. He'll be in the garden taking on undefeated Texas Tech. The Red Raiders 12th in the country. It's the first ever meeting between those schools Thursday night. So Duke is going to go in. In the net rankings, third in the country, Texas Tech at four. Texas Tech was unranked to start the season, and they've gone all the way up to number 12. But do we get to talk about Zion Williamson another time? I hope. I can't <laughs> wait. He is fun to watch, a terrific addition to the game. And a great freshman class that Mike Krzyzewski has there in Durham. Howard on the drive and one, and a foul on Chavez. Well, she might have got away with a walk. Howard has been so aggressive here in the second half. Pump fake, one, two, no, that's good. Off the glass, 22nd point for Anriel Howard. She's got eight points here, I think, yeah. in the third quarter. 
Well, she is a graduate transfer, as we said, from Texas A&M. And Coach Vic Schaefer said we've had to get her up to speed quickly in just three months. But he said she's so engaged. She asks questions. She wants to know things. And he said she brings so much positive energy to our team. And she's been an absolute joy to coach. But more important, 4.0 GPA. Just posted that. She's pretty proud of herself as well. Well, that's all part of the package for this program. They really stress that a lot to excel uh, in the classroom as well as on the court. Yonescu, the three on the inbounds. And Sabrina now with 14 to go along with her three boards and three assists. So fun to watch. Such a good players highly skilled McCowan passing out of the post to Howard and she took an extra step so Ionescu who was the junior from Walnut Creek California uh, from Romanian heritage and Tierra Holmes is 0 for 4 from the floor but she's yet to score from the floor she had a four free throws, and that's her four points in the game. The sagging, collapsing defense has worked on McCowan. Cazorla, terrific pass to find Ruthie Hebert. Maite has been fantastic running the show. I'm telling you, in the shoot, off the elbow screen, ball screen defense, you know how Mississippi State plays it. Shooters in the corners, can't pinch the lane. Danbury pulls up and knocks it down. State has had the response to every bucket so far in this third quarter. Well, you heard Coach Schaefer tell Holly on his way off the floor what a mature, smart team he has. They, they're not going to get rattled on the road. Chance for a three-point play right here. Ruthie Hebert. A two-point Mississippi State lead. Watch the screen and roll. The and one opportunity when we come back. Two-point lead for Mississippi State over Oregon. Here in Eugene, Debbie. Now watch what happens on the strong side of the floor in this ball screen defense, okay? Here comes the screen. You're going to see the hedge right here. She's going to fight through that and then the roll to the middle. Now keep an eye right here because this is Yonescu. You can't help on the roll because there's a kick out there. So watch as the ball goes down the lane. McCowan's got to beat her to that spot. You can't pinch from the strong side. That's why you don't see Danbury helping. She's got Yonescu in the corner. It is a well-designed offensive play getting the result that you want for Kelly Graves. Ionescu with 14, mm -hmm. Cazorla with 12, Hebert with 10, the double-digit scorers right now for Oregon. Howard with 23, and Tierra McCowan's been held to just five points, two for three shooting so far for State. Holly? Jordan Danbury is staying on the floor right now for Mississippi State despite those three fouls. That should tell you how much Vic Schaefer trusts her and trusts her judgment right now with four minutes left in the third quarter. You know, yeah. that's a critical point, Holly, because it's an important time in the game here. It's only a one-possession game, and you know the game is going to go like this. There's not going to be a lot of separation at this point. Bibby running the baseline. Heber tried to knock it out to a teammate, and it will go back to Mississippi State. I still think if you're Mississippi State, you have to work really hard to get a quality touch for Tiara McCowan on the block. To think that we're this deep into the game and she's still 0 for 4, or 2 for 3 from the floor. Excuse me, I made a mistake earlier. I read the, the, the statue wrong. She had 35 in the win against Oregon a year ago. And so far, the Ducks have been able to keep her quiet offensively, and despite that, the Bulldogs still lead by a deuce. See, now, if you get Bibby on that spot on that top of the floor to shoot the three with the way UNESCO had to help. They just reversed the call here and gave it to Mississippi State.
Good D. Howard, who's had the hot hand nine points in this quarter alone. They look out of sorts on this possession. Holmes will just pull up and hit it. Boy, they made something out of nothing right there. They just don't seem to be moving the ball well. Another dribble drive for Oregon. How about the Ducks outscoring Mississippi State in the paint tonight? It's been their ability off the balance. It's not the back to the basket play. It's the way they've been able to go off the ball screen defense of Mississippi State to get inside. And Chavez with another play. Freshman with the steal. Lunescu waits for the Hebert screen and then will get swatted by McCowan. That's her third block. You know what, though? I like it. You've got to attack the shot blocker. you got to see if you can pick up another foul. And McCowan does such a great G job of moving her feet and staying away from the contact with that reach. The kick, Chavez. No. McCowan lost it off of her leg. That is a fun matchup to watch. Those two All-America candidates going head-to-head. -head. Ionescu somehow kept her balance. Chavez, the floater won't go. And a trip to the line coming up for Taylor. How about Taylor Chavez off the bench tonight? Averages six points and a rebound only twice this season. She's been in double figures. They are eight of nine from the line. They rarely miss. The entire team is fantastic. Best free throw shooting team in the country. Yeah, they're pretty good playing with the lead, right? Watch this right here, beautiful. I love that floater. Scored all seven of her points in this third quarter and we are even at 55. Back in the triangle in two, with Chloe Bibby and McCowan being defended. McCowan, and the foul is going to be called on the floor on Hebert as McCowan tried to turn. And watch how physical it is in here. Hebert is really trying to hold her out. That foul is on Hebert. It's her opportunity again for a backdoor look, Beth. Pull up off the ball screen. Heber, good fight to keep it alive. And Chavez playing with a lot of confidence. Danbury quick to get out on Unescu. And a step up screen action. Baseline drive out the other side for three. And McCowan's got the rebound. Callum needs to keep her emotions in check right here. Her ninth board. Has yet to take a shot here in the second half. Final minute of the quarter and a walk. Kelly Graves' defensive game plan has been outstanding because the triangle and two has really disrupted what Mississippi State likes to run, and they like to run a lot of dribble drive, but they are telling Mississippi State that we're not going to let McCowan beat us on the offensive end, and we're not going to let her rebound. If you're going to come in here and win, you're going to have to do it without McCowan. And you know that he and that coaching staff have been challenging this team. They have not been pleased with the defensive performances to date. Well, I'll tell you what, I watched... Carolyn Keeger's Marquette team play in Starkville on film, and they were terrific. Off the bounce, they attacked, they got an open court like that, and they got to the rim. Another block, uh, she blocked that one right out of her shoes, did Tierra. <laughs> one of the fans right behind me agreed with my verbiage on that. Thank you very much, sir.
If she had the red shoes that Holly Rowe was sporting tonight, oh, that was, probably would not have been an issue. I was wondering if we, we could saw get those a, another <laughs> reference in the game to those red shoes. Shot clock, uh, an issue right here. It's at five. Ionescu sees it, launches short. Here's a chance to score in transition. Hasn't happened much. Holmes will settle things down. Shot clock is off. They can get the final shot of the quarter. Howard, they'd love to have her take a look. She's had the hot hand. Bibby for three in time, short. Six zero run for Oregon to end. Eight thousand nine hundred and fifty one on hand from Eugene and Matthew Knight Arena. Twenty three points for Unreal Howard to lead all scores tonight. Sabrina Unescu with sixteen to pace the Ducks. Tierra McCowan has been held to five points on just three field goal attempts tonight. She scored 35 in their win last year over Oregon, and Jordan Danbury has just picked up her fourth personal foul. You know, one of the things Sabrina Ionescu told us today at shoot-around was, I know those guards are smaller and quicker, but if I can get them in the paint, I can elevate over them. That was an example right there. She drew a foul on Danbury by being able to get her into the paint and trying to score over the top. Both teams 13 of 14 at the free throw line tonight. Hi. Well, guys, I just listened into the Mississippi State huddle, and Vic Schaefer reminded his team of what he said in his pregame speech. He said, I didn't say it would be 30 minutes of hell. I said it would have to be 40 minutes of hell. He reminded them that in the fourth quarter, those three-point shots that Oregon likes to take are harder to fall, that rebounding would be important. And as you can see, they've turned it up, but that is crucial. Danbury's just fouled out. About 90 feet away from the basket, she commits her fifth. And a starter is out for Mississippi State. You gotta be smarter than that. You just have to. You know you've got four. You just picked it up. And I think this is the first time we are seeing Briamber Scott tonight. The sophomore from Little Rock has checked in. That's the first time this season a Mississippi State player has fouled out of a game. Ionescu for three, and she got fouled on the shot. And it's Scott who just checked into the game. Sabrina Ionescu with a little bit of space. Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, she had room to come down. I don't like it. Yeah. She's the only player in the country averaging over 18 points, eight rebounds, and eight assists per game. She's already got a couple triple doubles to her credit to give her 12 for her career. That's tied with BYU, former BYU standout Kyle Collinsworth on the men's side with 12 career triple doubles. They hold the NCAA record together. If I had a women's college basketball fantasy team, I think she's my first pick. She's your number one? I think so. She is a stat stuffer on the right side of the box score. Bumped it up to a five-point edge. They get McCowan a touch. Her first shot of the second half, and it's no good. Oregon is very good with a lead. They've got a two-possession lead right now. There's a shoe on the floor. Hebron and McCowan. It's a held ball. Those two have been getting it after it all night long. Jump ball. Giving no quarter. Nothing excessive or extra nope. there. 
It's going to be Mississippi State with the arrow. What a difference it's been. 35-19 and five blocks last year. She's got a double-double in 16 straight games. That's in jeopardy right now. And it's a 9-2 duck run. McCallum reposting. Reamber Scott, the air ball. They should not even be taking this no. out right now. And let's go to Hebert. Hangs and hits. That's a big shot. That time, McCowan too tired to hard hedge. She stays back in the gap, and Hebert makes her pay. Oregon has done a terrific job of attacking the two-man game. Here's the screen, and what McCowan has been doing is hedging, but this time she stays in the gap, and watch what Sabrina Unescu does. She's been watching the second level the whole game. So see, McCowan doesn't jump out. Look at that pocket pass, Beth. It's perfect. Right to Heber to finish. They Guys, one, one thing to keep in mind is Sierra McCown usually averages 25 minutes a game. At this point in the game, she has played 32 minutes. I can tell you that during shoot-around today, she didn't have her typical energy, in my opinion. I've checked with their staff. They say she's not sick, but she did take a blow to the forehead earlier in this yeah. game. She's had some ice on it during the timeouts at times. So, I don't know. I just, I've seen her play a lot. This is not the typical Sierra McCown energy that I'm used to seeing. You know, it's tough for big girls to play that long, that many quality minutes. And like that play right there, Holly, she has been jumping out on the hedge the whole game. That's the first time that she didn't. Fatigue might be taking a factor. Two shots in the second half. That's it. And she's missed them both. And as a team, Mississippi State now, only two points in the last six minutes as Oregon has opened up the advantage. Yonescu oh, wow. over McCowan won't go. But Sabrina beats everybody to the loose ball. <laughs> 21 points for her tonight with four rebounds, four assists, and it's Pizarro again right down the lane. Every time you have Sabrina Yonescu in the corner on the strong side, you cannot help. Three ball is good from Scott. That showed a lot of confidence by Briamber Scott, the 5'11 sophomore. That's the first swat of loose. That's the first deflection on that and the way she pokes that head, right? And they forced him into a tougher shot there. And they're rewarded with a one and done. Holmes slicing to the bucket. Numbers the other way for the Ducks. Ionescu. I'm not sure anybody hesitates in the game as well as she does. She got a good hezzy game. Yeah. Another stop and start right there for her to shake a defender and a trip to the line where she's 11 for 11 yeah, tonight. Here's the thing. I mean, if you're a young player and you're watching, look at the skill set with her left hand, her ability to drive left, her ability to pass off the bounce with her left hand. Well, tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. It's the DXL Frisco Bowl, San Diego State and Ohio. Check out dual threat quarterback Nathan Rourke with the Bobcats as they look for back-to-back -back bowl wins out of the Mac. UNESCO now 13 of 13 at the stripe and the first blow of the entire night for McCowan. Try and catch her breath here for the stretch run. They've already lost Jordan Danbury and has fouled out. And it's Anriel Howard time right here for Mississippi State. First foul on Gildon. And Howard will try and add to her 25-point total. She's four shy of her career high right now. 
They've been awfully good at the line tonight, too. Just their second miss. They're now 13 of 15. That's a pretty good stat line. And you know what? You expect that kind of stat line. She misses both. And you expect that because of all the attention that Sierra McCowan draws on the inside. They've got to guard her with two or two and a half. Another little hesitation. The shoulder shake. Hebert, weak side rebound. Chloe Bibby's got to come alive here, Beth, for Mississippi State. The last time she scored was 6.29 left in the second quarter. Nick Schaefer's got to find a way to get her free for some offense. Ducks up 10, five and a half to go. Floor, it's double the freshman, double the fun. Oh my. And you can see Zion and R.J. Barrett and the rest of the Duke Blue Devils at Madison Square Garden as they get set to take on Texas Tech Thursday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Out of the timeout, Mississippi State trying to change their fortunes, although Tierra McCowan will stay over on the sideline. They're down 10, 5.27 to go. Holly? Well, guys, in that last timeout, Vic Schaefer was really imploring his team to have some pride. He said, I can't believe everybody's heads are down. Why aren't we competing harder? I think that we would be more excited. It's a top 10 matchup. Where's the competitive fire? He just wants them to find something in their tank right now. And they, they're running out of time to find it. Triangle and two has been outstanding. And there's Bibby's first field goal since the second quarter. They're going to give her a two on that. That's what we said going to break, that Bibby had to come alive, that Vic Schaefer needed to get her going, and he runs a great set to get her the ball. I take Pizorla fouled out top. Off the timeout against the triangle and two. You know, Chavez needs to lock and trail on that. She's been doing that all game. This time she doesn't go right behind Bibby and chase her off those screens. She goes around and over the top of that baseline screening action. That's why she was open. All she needs is a half a second. Pizzola continues to impress tonight. 16 points to go along with her five assists. Run the same thing here, Beth. Holmes, short and a foul. And how long do the Bulldogs keep McCowan on the bench? Now we're under five minutes to go. Second foul on Ionescu. She leads the country with eight double-doubles, so... I, well, I think the, the rhythm of your team changes with her on the floor, right? So they can't get a lot of movement, and when she's off the floor, the lane opens up a little bit. Maybe Vic Schaefer feels like getting home to the free throw yeah. line, getting some shots for Bibby. Going a couple more possessions, maybe, before you bring her back. Maybe the next uh, dead ball. Next uh, opportunity on defense. And the blocking foul is going to be called on Howard. So that's the fourth foul now on Howard. Ionescu back to the line where she's 13 to 13, 23 points. It's their women in flight night here in Eugene and they encourage all the fans to fill in their signs who's in, who inspires you in this youngster courtside I am inspired by Sabrina because she's awesome yeah that is so cool Sabrina you are so amazing is what she wrote on her sign that's fantastic 
terrific job by everybody really here in Oregon uh, for a night like that, women in flight and the crowd that they've got in here, terrific energy. Carter, fouled, and she'll go to the line. It's uh, interesting for Kelly Graves. This team has done such a good job of not fouling the shooter, and that's back-to-back -back plays where they fouled the jump shooter. We, fill, we filled in ours, so we're, we're inspired too today. And I know a lot of sports fans around the country and movie fans inspired uh, over the years by Penny Marshall and uh, in her honor, the two L's in her last name there, the L's from Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. We're going to miss her. She was... Uh, an amazing sports fan and did so much for us uh, at the movies as well. Yeah, my favorite movie, A League of Their Own. Uh -huh. We don't have time for you to go through all the lines right now, but oh, so I just could save them. I could, I could give them all to you. Marla Hooch. What a hitter. She's my favorite one. Need more night games. <laughs> Hebert will kick it out. Ronescu. Swat it away. Sabrina gets it back, shot clock winding down, and the takeaway from Mississippi State, under four to go. Got a score here. Scott fouled on the wow. drive, and Oregon's got to be careful here now. These fouls to stop the clock. That's three consecutive trips that Mississippi State is going to the free throw line. Oh, excuse me, that, that one's on the floor. That's just the fourth team foul. The next one will be free throws. Schaefer encouraging Holmes. Hey, we gotta go, we gotta go. Carter trying to back in on Hebert. Short on the shot, and it will go to the Ducks. As McCowan stays on that sideline. She played the first 34 minutes of the game and looked a bit winded, so they got her a break, but she's been over there now. Remaining on the sideline with this smaller unit trying to get some pressure and force some turnovers. Almost got one right there. Instead, it's a breakaway. Kazorla. She's been running a layup line all night. What a bounce if you're Oregon. Howard quiets the crowd momentarily as Mississippi State tries to fight back to stay undefeated and keep the streak alive. They've won 46 in a row against non-conference opponents in the regular season. And this is why Oregon is good with the league because they are an outstanding free throw shooting team as you already mentioned that they lead the nation in free throw percentage. 85% on the season. They are shooting 96% tonight and sometimes the ball just bounces your way. Twenty-five for Sabrina. She's not flirting with the triple-double tonight, but after a scoreless first quarter, she has turned it on. I almost think that was by design that Kelly Graves had her playing off the ball to start the game. My take was Ola did such a good job of running their two-man game through the shoot. That keeps Ionescu fresh for a late fourth quarter game, right? When you need her the most. Holmes. Gets that one up off the glass. set the school record with a 17 assist performance and a career high from the line for her tonight. 
17 to 17, and she gets the bounce there. The clock's running, so you don't need to walk the ball off the floor like that. 29 for Sabrina, and the long three for Howard, and a quick timeout. Eight point game, under two minutes to go. Holly? Well, guys, you see Sabrina Unescu really going off lately. It was in the first half, though, she was elevating her teammates. She's been working with what they call a thinking partner. Brett Ledbetter is a great coach. With their point guard as the leading scorer. And I asked Diana Taurasi about the 2014, and she says Maria Conlon was a point pointer. guard. <laughs> Shot clock was winding down. Moving briskly now, under a minute and a half to go. Another layup. So Vic, Chaf uh, Vic Schaefer deciding to try and open up the floor a little bit and use his athleticism as opposed to playing Tierra McCowan here in the last six minutes of this game. And the fifth foul on number five, Enriel Howard. So two Bulldogs have fouled out tonight. And she will do so with a career-high 30-point performance. That's not where you want to foul. You've got it to a two-possession game. Yeah. The, there were 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, you want to foul either early or now just let it play out. And certainly not her with yeah, you didn't four fouls. No. And I think Coach Schaefer is explaining that right now. Thank 30 you. points for Howard tonight. But it's tough to come back when the opposition isn't missing free throws. 26 for 27 as a team. Beth, you bring your team on the road in this environment with a team picked to win the Pac-12. And you're picked to win the SEC. You only gain from this experience. If you can get Bibby free for a three, that's what you want. Yonescu's guarding her now. Got a blocking foul. And by the way, for Oregon, of course, have you been following uh, women's hoops and the Ducks? NCAA sanctions coming down against the program. They still have an opportunity to appeal, but right now they are looking at a two-game suspension for Kelly Graves. And... A lot of the speculation here in Eugene is that, you know, and, and around college basketball, he might choose to sit the next two games, which would yeah. be Air Force and UC Irvine, and I mean, take the suspension before they get into Pac-12 right. play. First Pac-12 game, January 4th, here against Washington. I'd go ahead and get it out of the way. Failed to promote an atmosphere of compliance. Basically, they had a strength and conditioning coach that was running in some drills with them. Uh, but right now, it would be uh, the biggest win of the season for Oregon as they hold the lead in the final minute. And for more on Ionescu, Holly? Well, we've tried to teach you a lot about players through the years. And Sabrina, we've told you all about her scouting progress. And we have not told you about her fluency speaking Romanian, part of her heritage from her parents. She speaks to her mom every day in Romanian. Ce mai faci? Fac bine, jucăm asta noapte. Ce preferi? No, ce preferi? Trage? Basket? Sau paseze? Ninja. Eu prefer să pasez ninja. Really? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Care este ce mare sportiv roman? Nadia Comuneci. Obviously, thank you. Mulțumesc. Mulțumesc. <laughs> Spoken like a true point guard, we all like to pass more than shoot it. <laughs> I need to work on my Romanian, I'm aware. I'm a fluent French speaker, but I don't have the Romanian accent down, but I'll get better at it, because she still has another year in college, so I'll work on it. We applaud the effort. 82 to 74, Oregon in charge right now. Final 30 seconds of this one. 
27 of 28 at the free throw line. And really, the story of this one is they've been able to outscore the bigger Mississippi State team off the bounce and get into the lane. Well, I think it was the ball screening defense of yep. Mississippi State that they attacked all night, and they have enough ball handlers and skilled players in that two-man game that they were able to manipulate that to get the right personnel. I thought Kelly Graves' defensive game plan as well was fantastic with the triangle and two, which we saw multiple possessions of. And he wasn't even sure today at shoot-around if he would even use it. And they will hold Tierra McCowan to a season low five points. Holding her to just five shots. This is a Mississippi State team that went undefeated through the regular season last year, 30-0 and en route to the regular season championship in the SEC. And they will taste defeat for the first time this year. The Oregon Ducks will win the top 10 showdown here in Eugene. 29 points 